Hi, Phil Henry here for the world-famous Phil Henry Show. Coming up tomorrow night, we will at 7 o'clock, that's 7 o'clock on Facebook.com forward slash Phil Henry fans reveal the names of the names of the second semifinal uh, participants, but the name of the winner of the second semifinal to go up against Margaret Gray in Bar Fight Championship for 2020 one week from Tuesday night. That'll be on, if I'm not mistaken, the 17th or uh, what are we talking? No, it's not the 17th. Tomorrow is... Uh, Tomorrow's the 6th and uh, the 7th and says 14th. Yes, the 14th, that's right. 7 plus, seven. yes, now, it, yeah, now, it, now I remember. Yeah. Don't be smart. So the 17th, the 17th, the 14th, the 14th, for God's sake. Yeah, it's the 14th. 7 plus 7 equals, uh, put it here, write it down here. It's 14, I, I, I got it. Anyway, so uh, that's how old you are. Isn't that funny? Just fooling around, just trying to, you know, loosening it up a little bit, Phil, for the week. God. What's your story? Wait a minute, wait. Uh, well, it's, you'll loosen it up, so... That's right, bud. It has to be something filthy, something that's so degenerate and filth-ridden that you must, you simply must express it so that if you keep it inside, it will turn into a large, rotting hole, a decaying thing in the middle of your soul. And I would want that to happen, so go ahead and reference me loosening up my anus. Oh, God, Margaret. Jesus Christ. That's what he's doing. Mar Ms. Ray, don't call me Margaret. Ms. Ray did not... You said loosen something up. Can you think of anything else? How about muscles? How about... Oh, man. I won't have it, Phil. I'll tell you that right now. Yeah. Damn, Ms. Gray, you, uh, you... Margaret, you have taken yourself backward about five years. I think it'll be take, take another five years to... What are you talking about? I think it'll take another five years to catch up to the goodwill of the audience after what you just done did say. After what I just... Would you sit down for a minute, okay, Mar? You don't have to be that graphic. I'm getting tired of being used as the, the Raggedy Ann on this staff, Phil. Now, just hear me out. I'm getting tired of being used as the Raggedy Ann. I get up, I waddle in, and I go, hi, everyone, it's me, and you pick me up and you butt a cigarette in my eye. What are you I don't think it's that bad. I do. Uh, proceed. You're on. Oh, oh, that's right. So on the 14th, Margaret, you can take out all your uh, aggressions and transgressions and everything else against yes. either Mavis Leonard or Jay Santos. Who do I think will win? I think Mavis will win, but that's just me being very prejudiced. I think it's going to be Jay Santos. I, this Mavis with no fight experience, forget it. Who asked you? I asked me. All right, that, that's fine. Thank you very much, General. So coming up tomorrow night uh, at 7 o'clock, we'll give you the results of that big bout between Mavis Leonard and Jay Santos. We'll have the winner of our Merch of Your Choice contest. Whoever picks the right fighter as the winner and tells us a good story as to why they were the winner. Brother, you are it. Or sister, you get yourself the Merch of Your Choice from our merch store. And then one week, we got the special live netcast of Bar Fight 2020. That will be live netcast Bar Fight 2020 right here at PhilHenryShow.com. Don't miss it. And uh, don't delay. Margaret? Oh, yes, don't delay. Watch it. Yeah, right. World famous Phil Henry show for the El Pacifico in Southern California. My name is Robert Leonard here on the beautiful sun, sun soaked beaches of Southern California, but the June gloom is gone. The sun is shining. The beach is heating up. It's cool at night, but not too cool. We have Margaret Gray. Hello, I'm Margaret Gray. General Galen Shaw. Yes, I'm General Galen Shaw. Bud Dickman. I am Bud Dickman. I'm Robert Leonard. You already said that. I already said that. Bill Henry. Well, wasn't that just... Okay, thank you. That was a uh, extemporaneous... Uh, some real beat poetry there, Robert. I like the man. I love to talk about... I like to just kind of let it fly off the top of my head, you know? Well, that flew off the top of your head, all right. Out of control, off the top of your head. Yeah, it's great. Yeah, will loosen up, Miss Gray. I mean... Okay, uh... All right, I'll loosen it up. I was already on that discussion. Wait a minute, we don't want to go there again. Right. Now let's stay off the whole idea of loosening it up. All right, if you want to know what we're talking about, listen to the, the promo. Um, were you on my, I thought you were gonna walk off the show. I just about did. This is great, I'm trying to, I don't try to be my, my good buddy after, after ripping one like that. What do you mean rip one? That what he said was so, so befouled, he might as well have just ripped one. Just ripped a real smeller, and I mean something in the high decibel range, like it ripped through a pair of jeans. That's what I'm talking about. Do you understand? Finally! <laughs> wow. I'm kidding. Yeah I, yeah, I hope so. Uh, it's the world-famous Phil Henry Show. I was kidding about that. Why'd you do that? Because I wanted to flip all you weirdos out, okay? 
So it's going to be another one of those weeks, or maybe months, maybe summers. I don't know. Uh, welcome to the program. Uh, what's everybody? Uh, is everybody feeling good? I feel fantastic. Yeah, I'm feeling pretty good. I had a great Fourth of July. How about you, bud? Yeah, it was a lot of fun. I was down here at the beach with Mr. Henry. Yeah, bud was uh, a couple of houses up where you were staying with some friends. Yeah, I've got a couple of friends from uh, go to Oxnard College. So they were hanging out up there. We had tons and tons of bloody ass fireworks, and uh, you know, I'm I'm beginning to. Uh, and I don't don't please don't you know say that I'm un-American. Uh, I love my Fourth of July as much as anybody, and I've celebrated a hell of a lot of them and uh, down through the years. And uh, but I'm getting the fireworks thing is starting to wear a little thin. All right, now why now you do you may have a good reason here. You're kidding. No, just hear him out. Well, what I'm saying is. I don't really, I don't get what there's a lot of patriotism going on there. It's just a lot of people, a lot of fire nuts and weirdos and cats that like to explode things. And it's their time to do it, you know. And um, if ever there was a, a legalized, a year for legalized animal torture, it's the 4th of July. Yeah, you know, my aunt was saying that. Now that I'll give you, okay. And you know that we have Duchess. And uh, she gets very, very uh, uh, scared when she hears the explosions. Uh, Frank takes her into the bedroom. God damn. What is that? Oh, my God. Wait a minute. What do you mean, bud? Well, talk about the dog. He takes the dog into the bedroom and wraps his arms around the dog so the dog feels comforted. We read that. It was uh, something that uh, Cesar... Who's the Cesar Chavez? The dog whisperer? No, Cesar Chavez is the guy that founded the United Farm Workers. Oh, oh, I'm sorry. Yes. Um, the dog whisperer guy says, you need to hug the animal so they feel secure. Is that it? Yes, exactly. Well, that's true. That's true. Animals do like it when, if they're, especially when they're nervous about explode, exploding fireworks. If you put your arms around a dog very tightly, they do feel uh, comforted and secure. Same thing uh, generally with a cat. So they don't know what these noises are, but they like the, uh, I don't know, there's something about the, the touch. But uh, so, that's, so that's your problem, huh? The, uh, the animals are getting scared. I don't like seeing the animals get freaked out. Yeah, I just don't. I don't think it's funny, and I don't think, uh, uh, I, I understand that, you know, a lot of people are going to think that I'm being a little bit too much on the animal rights thing, but I mean, since when do we get off on torturing animals? Well, I'm, you know, I'm a, 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 a sort of a, a split mind on this, Phil. I don't know that we're trying to torture the animals so much as we are saying, hello, we're humans. This is how we celebrate. This is how we go. We, you know, a lot of times when I'm talking to Duchess. Uh, now, what, what kind of a dog is Duchess? Duchess is a Lopso Also. All right, a Lopso Also. Okay, and? And what? Lopso Also what? Not also Alpso. It's a dog breed, bud. You get it? Yeah, Mister. You go. It's a dog breed, bud. Yeah. I mean, yeah. You did kind of. Uh, it looked like you were gonna seize up, Phil. It's a dog breed, bud. Do you get it? Yes, I do, Mister Henry. I'm gonna haul off and belt. Hold on for a minute, for crying out loud. Now you're saying what, Margaret? I'm saying that we've got a dog that gets, as Phil was saying, gets wigged out by the fireworks. Frank hugs it and calms it down, okay? And if in your mind that means sex, then so be it. Oh, Jesus. I was not saying that at all. Well, you were thinking it. We'll try and uh, clean this up a little bit, folks, as we move along. I don't know why all of this has to go to bestiality, but it... <laughs> yeah, I'm, we're talking about just making a dog or an animal feel more safe. That's exactly what we're talking about, yeah. And I know probably in my dotage, in my old age, I'm getting really weird. Like today I'm coming out of the market. I'm coming out of the supermarket today and I picked up some of those, you know, vegan burger patties, big deal. And I got myself a thing of water and, you know, just a kind of a sedate evening before, you know, we start producing the show. And I see a dog in a car. And uh, what was it doing? What was it doing was in the car barking. Oh, you mean it was the dog's... Yes, the car's parked and there's a dog in there and the windows look like they're rolled all the way up. They got the little vent thing open. I don't know, man. I, I, I... You know, Phil, you are really kind of going overboard now. People are talking about you. They think you're turning into sort of the far-out old man, you know, who goes from door to door, up and down the block, telling people what's wrong with everyone else. And eventually you try to get a sort of a neighborhood meeting going and you bring in the city councilman and, and no one wants to show up and, you know... No, I don't know, but uh, go ahead, Phil. What I'm saying is that I just I worry about uh, I worry about crap that never used to bother me. I guess, but uh, well, didn't you you threatened to call the cops, right? That's what Phil did. He but you didn't, right? Yes, I did. I said I would call the cops if the damn supermarket that was at didn't do something about it. That they sent a manager out, and the manager said the the windows are cracked. I don't know, man. How, how much are those windows supposed to be open? Well, they got to be open substantially, man. Not just look like a sliver. I don't think it should be just a, a little tiny sliver. Well, that's what these things was, man. It was, uh, that's what these things was. Phil, 
at one time you were full of so much promise. That's what these things were. They were cracked a little bit, and they had the vent on the roof. I don't know, man. Yeah, but there's nothing wrong with it. Let me, let me say something. I share your concern for the animals, but you can't get, you can't get too squirrely that you're wigging people out. You know, you're, you're going, oh, my God. The, and it turns out the windows were open. That's what you said to me. Yeah, they were, but they weren't open. You know, they weren't open to your liking. Now, whatever the law says, you'd be, be a hell of a thing for you to call a cop over there. And the cop says, no, those windows are open. Now how are you going to feel? Hey, I'm going to feel just fine because, you know what, that cop works for me. Oh, here we go. Bill, yes, the police work for you, but no, they don't. More and more the police are being independent because, you know what, it gives them a feeling of freedom. Yeah, it gives them a feeling they can strangle a guy. God damn. I didn't say that, did I? Well, that's kind of your enemy. You don't want the freedom to be able to strangle a guy, but you want to be able to uh, pursue an independent investigation and to find out what's jacked up, you know. You guys have got nothing. You're saying nothing about what I'm talking about. Well, what are you saying? All I'm talking about is a damn dog that was in a car and the windows didn't like the, the, the free to follow the investigation into whatever. Uh, you, know, I'm, you know what I'm saying? No, I, I, no, I don't. Uh, let's just pretend like we never even talked about this. I got Dean Wheeler coming up, and uh, this was a phone call you made, bud. I made a call. Will you t- go ahead, bud? I made a call. You were cleaning up the backyard. Yeah. Um, yes, I was cleaning up the back, but that's what got us in trouble, right? It, it got me in trouble. The back of the house at my house is just overgrown with jungle foliage. It's just insane. Jackie's coming out here in a week, and, and in the process of sort of kind of throwing the house together, I decided to go back out there and clear out all that damn jungle stuff. I didn't ask for any help, but apparently you... Uh, I, I called him Mr. Wheeler on account of... He calls Wheeler up because Wheeler did yard work for me a year ago as a result of a bet. You really got some... You got a pair on you, kid. I'm going to talk about that. We also have Ted Bell coming up. Ted Bell, who watched Hamilton. You guys see Hamilton? Oh, my God. I, for- I forgot. To- Hamilton was absolutely exquisite. No, we, we, uh, we didn't watch it, but uh, we listened to the, the soundtrack. Uh, yes, I did, I think. Yeah, I did. Yes, you did, you think. Yeah, well, okay. It was, it was a lot of people singing about... Alexander Hamilton. Yes, yes, and I did. You and Vivienne? Uh, no, she was at her parents' house. Oh, yeah, then she came over. Man, you really got... She's a real memorable girl. You really, I love that girl as, as as much as I can love anything. It's just I don't, live, I don't love anything that much. I am only kidding. Like, did you watch it or didn't you? Yes. All right. Hamilton, Ted Bell, talking about that coming up world-famous Phil Henry Show. The world-famous Phil Henry Show brought to you by Stewie's in the Mall. Stewie's serves lunch, not breakfast, not dinner, just lunch, not a snack, not a midnight snack, not even an idle drink. Stewie's, lunch only. We specialize in glasses of milk, a bologna sandwich, jello, and maybe some pudding. That's right. Stewie's serves the greatest bologna sandwich you've ever had in your existence on this or any other world you may have visited. That's how confident we are that you'll love Stewie's for lunch. Stewie's for lunch in the Mall. Call five. 5 5 5 5 5 5 Oh, I forgot. Stewie's in the mall. Bologna. The greatest. Jello. Perfect. A glass of milk. That's right. A full 8-ounce glass of milk with your bologna sandwich and your jello. Doesn't that sound good? I'm asking you. No, it doesn't. <laughs> this is the mistake you... I told you not to do a live commercial where you'd have to get people to... You couldn't lie, could you? Well, you couldn't lie for the... Stewie's in the mall. A bologna sandwich, a glass of milk, and jello. If you like that kind of a thing, we recommend it. If you don't, there's many other places that are better. Stewie's in the mall. My ad agency Bill Caldwell is going to go out of business as a result of this bullshit commercial we just did. Stewie's in the mall. Yes, the world famous Phil Henry Show from the El Pacifico here in Southern California. I am Margaret Gray. And here now, Phil Henry. So, Dean Wheeler, we had a whole situation here because, Bud, you're making phone calls. Uh, Bud made a phone call to Dean Wheeler this weekend, and I'm, I'm still trying to figure this thing out. But he uh, made a phone call to Dean Wheeler asking Dean if he was going to be available to, well, let's get Dean on, uh, unless you want to. Dean, are you there? He's, he's in, in the club right now, Amarilda. Oh, well, Amarilda's playing tonight, Phil, at, uh, at the backstop. Here. Dean Wheeler. Uh, oh, hi, Phil. It's Dean. How are you doing? I'm great, Dean. Uh, I'm sorry. I know that Elmer Amarilda's on stage. Is this a bad time? Uh, no, no, it's fine, Phil. I'm sorry. I uh, was just making sure she's up. And hold on for just a minute. Dean, uh, his wife, is Emerald, is a singer up uh, in the Bay Area, and she's at the backstop in uh, Oakland right now. Yeah, she's... Yeah, baby. Um... Yeah, uh, so go ahead, Phil. Uh, Dean, did you get a phone call from uh, Bud Dickman? 
As a matter of fact, yes, I did. And I want to talk to Is Mr. Dickman there? Yeah, right here, Mr. Wheeler. Uh... Okay. I don't know who you think you are, but I recorded the phone call, and I'm re ready to play it for Mr. Henry. I've got it here in a, on, a, on a recorder. Uh, if you just bear with me, Phil, because the horn player, we hired a new horn player. We hired uh, Harry Abrams. Uh, do you know him, uh, General? Yeah, I know Harry very well. Yeah. If he points the horn at... Oh. Is he doing it? Yeah, he, he pointed the horn right at her rear end. Uh, this is a problem that Dean's had with the uh, horn players in his wife's band. They point the bell of the horn right at his wife's ass. Maybe it's just maybe a coincidence. Sure, that's what it is, Phil. It's a coincidence. I specifically say to them, don't point the bell of your horn at my... Dean, is really all that much of a big thing? Y yes, it is a big thing. It's disrespectful to me. Does it mean anything? It may not mean anything. In fact, my wife said she doesn't care. She doesn't know it's... I care. I care. <laughs> All right. What happened? What happened was I got a phone call. I have the... I'll play the recording for you right now, and you can judge for yourself. Yeah, this is Mr. Wheeler. Hi. We're calling. I understand you do yard work. I understand you do yard work. Do you do yard work? Do you, do you mow a lawn? Do you mow a lawn? Do you... Do you, do you... That was... All right. That, so that's the... Uh, phone call I got. I understand that that was Mr. Uh, Dickman who was asking me, do I do yard work? Uh, one year ago, you'll remember, Mr. Henry. That, that was that was a phone call, though. I mean, excuse me, excuse me. My wife's on stage, so I don't want to uh, raise my voice. All right, go ahead. Uh, one year ago, hold on for a minute. If he points the bell of the horn at her... I know what her ass you want. You know, I, I... I think you want to not make such an issue out of that, Dean. I'm sorry, who's this? It's Margaret Gray. All right, I... Don't make an issue out of whether the bell of the horn that the man is playing is pointed at your wife's rear end. This is something that you're compelled over. It's something that is racking your imagination. I don't think it means a thing. Okay, thank you very much for telling me all about my marriage. Are you done? Are you done? Yes, I'm done. Okay. You heard the phone call there, Phil. Could we rehear it? Yeah, I'd like to rehear it, okay? I'd like to rehear it. Oh, you want to rehear it? Look at, the, look at the horn. What's he, hey, Joey, he's doing the horn again. I don't know. I told him, and I told him, and I told him. He's got the horn pointed. Can we stick with this, or we'll just... Uh... Okay, no way. I'll play this again for you. Now, listen to this. This is the phone call that I got at my home. Yeah. Did I understand you do yard work? Do you do yard work? Are we going to have... You need to have some weed. You got to have some weed pulled. I got to have a weed pulled. You need to have a weed pulled. Okay, so you just heard that. That was Bud Dickman calling my residence and asking me about yard work. And All right, can I get, uh, just let them know? I can tell them. All right, but I want to, Phil, you remember last year we had the bet, Dean and I, and uh, about who would reach 1,000 uh, followers. Oh, my God, yes. Who would reach 1,000 followers first on Twitter? Right. And you won. And I won. Oh, that's right. And you had him do... You had him do yard work. Yeah, and that's... and Oh, so you do recognize... That, well, that's why... It was you, Dickman, wasn't it? Yeah. Was it you, bud? Yeah, it was me. I mean, it seems pretty obvious. I wasn't trying to hide it. Yeah, you were, man. You said you were trying to hide it. Thanks a lot for saying it. You think I'm going to, like, not tell, man? He was trying... He told me Mr. Henry called Mr. Wheeler and was trying to hide his voice and was trying to, like, mess with his mind. I thought I could get Mr. Henry some gardening help and it wouldn't cost anything if I mess with a mind. What makes you think you're going to mess with my mind? What, I'm going to do it for free? I thought that you would be, oh, yeah, that's right. I remember last year when General Shaw had me do it. And, and I, you know, I don't want to go through the same hell, so I'll just go ahead and do it. You know what, bud? That's the dumbest damn thing I've ever heard in my life. Tell me all about it. Yeah, it is, son. Well, that's the dumbest thing I've ever heard in my life. Well, it had the effect of this. I was getting ready and prepared and all set. I was, I'd taken a shower. Uh, it was this morning, and we were getting ready for Emerald's uh, appearance here uh, tonight at the backstop. And I was showered, I was shaved, I was uh, combing my hair and getting ready to put my underwear on. And so you're you're combing your hair before you even have your underwear on, huh? Yeah. Is that a is that a thing or something? Ne ne never mind. Go ahead. Yeah, that's what I was doing. Uh, hold on. Yeah, baby. Yeah. Do it, baby. Why don't you shut up? Why don't you come over here and make me... Dean, do you mind? Oh, I'm sorry. Okay, so, uh, so, take it easy, man. That's your old lady? 
Yeah, it's my old lady. What's it to you? Hey, Dean. So uh, I'm getting ready. I get this phone call, and that's what I hear. This guy breathing into the phone. Here's the phone call in case you missed it. And it goes something like this. We've already heard it twice, Dean. Well, here's a couple of... Here's the, here's the, the third... There was actually two callbacks. Uh, you called him twice? I called... I didn't know it was the first time recorded. Man, they ought to arrest you, man, for making, like, phone calls and, you know, threatening people. What are you threatening a guy, man? I said, will you do... Can you do a yard work? Well, he's saying things like, can you mow a lawn? Can you mow a lawn? Were you trying to harass him? I was trying to make him think that I was part of a, a group of people that knew that he'd... Oh, yeah, that's real smart. Like, somebody's going to keep this guy's career back. They're going to keep him from working or earning a living because they knew that he did yard work for General Galen Shaw. Bud, you're dumb, but the heights that you reach, the depths, the, the purity of your stupidity, it's, it's, I don't know whether to kiss you full in the mouth or beat you until you look like something that belongs in a soup can. Where are you going? I'm taking a walk. Well, you heard that, bud. God damn, man. Well, that's pretty much how I feel. Here's the third call that I received. Yes, yeah, I do. I want to know. I want to know. Can you pull a weed? I know. Can you pull weed? Can you pull a weed? I want to know. Pull weed? You hear, you, hear, you hear what I'm talking about, Phil? Bud, that is insane. I'm just trying to get inside the guy's head. You know, trying to get inside his head for what? He told me, he said, just, you did told me, but so I, he'd keep, I could keep the price down on the yard work. I never said I was doing any yard work, okay? You want to shut up? No, I don't want to shut up. No, I don't want to shut up. Okay, how about I come over there? All right, we're going to let you go, Dean, okay? No, no, it's okay. No, no, don't get nervous. Don't get nervous. Don't get nervous. What's your problem? I'm trying to listen to the song, okay? That's my wife. I'm going to be done on the phone here. Then I'll come over and talk to you about whatever your problem is. So, uh, you know, <laughs> Call him back. Hang on. It disconnected. No kidding. Call him back. Yeah, but Dean or Bud? No, I'm Bud. Dean? What, what, Wait, but, Phil, you there? Yeah, I'm right here. Why'd you hang up? I didn't hang up, man. We thought that you had disconnected somehow. No. Well, what was that? We heard some sort of a commotion. The guy came over. He was an old fraternity brother of mine. We recognized each other, so we gave each other the gorilla. That's all. Yeah. He's a guy named Stan Ardmore. You gave each other the gorilla? Yeah, we, we, we give it the gorilla, Stan. Uh, yeah. We look at each other, we go, why? Well, it, that's the last thing we heard, it disconnected. It sounded like you were getting strangled or something. Oh, oh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. No, it's these people I know in L.A. So, uh, but the bigger issue that we're losing sight of here is Stickman calling me up and harassing me. You're coming on, you sound like the gorilla, okay? Yeah. And you're making this about me? Man, it, was, it is about you. It was and is about you. It is, bud. Just because this guy meets a fraternity brother he is and does the gorilla. Yeah, right, the gorilla. Phil, I'm not about to sit here using up valuable currency from the spank bank to talk to you tight twiddlers about this B-E-S. Because... All right, well, uh, let me apologize. We apologize for him calling you up and asking you to do, do yard work, Dean. It might have been the fact that I had said you'd done it real good, you know? Yeah. I, I might have known that you guys wanted to rub it in on me. Nobody was looking around. I didn't, I, Dean, I didn't even know that Emerald was gigging tonight. I had none of this, none of this was uh, in front of my, uh, my vision, man. It was Bud who said, I found a guy that can do the gardening for you. It was Bud who said, you know, put the guy in there. And I realized it's Dean Wheeler. And he was having some kind of a big joke. Yeah, he's having a joke at the behest of General Shaw because they did the guy's yard work. And what happened, by the way, and that was one of the reasons why I called more than anything, when I had mentioned, yeah, sure, I did the guy's yard work, Amarella's in the next room, she hears that, and walks in and looks at me, she goes, she goes, are you bisexual? And she said what? Hold on, John. She said, are you bisexual? I said, what are you talking about, honey? I'm faithful to you. She goes, no, I know, but you're faithful to me with women, but you're going to do a guy's yard work. And she, I said, I said, are you really that desperate for a laugh? Did you sink to that kind of stupid, uh, 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 biphobic... And she, she went, ha, ha, you know, I, I guess she knew it wasn't funny. But, uh, no, no, it's not funny. So, so your wife thought she wanted to... Uh, nothing. All right, Dean, thanks a lot, okay? Dean, we thank you very much, man. Are you looking for Dean? Yeah. I'm his frat brother. I was got... <laughs> you know, they, they got... So Dean Wheeler there, I guess he had bigger fish to fry there at the club. The world-famous Phil Henry Show and uh, philhenryshow.com. Thank you very much, Dean. But I don't need your help, okay? I, I understand it, man, but you said it was going to be a back-breaking job. Yeah, and you said you were, you were breaking your ass. I mean, I'm not, I'm not encouraging the kid.
Well, it's a ridiculous and asinine little piece of, of theater to harass a man, because that's what you were doing. And you knew that when General Shaw and uh, Dean Wheeler made that bet, what are you looking at? Well, you're all like, you know, and you do, and your fingers are flying all over. Bud, the only reason why you live today is the very kind counsel and the wonderful offices of Phil Henry. Yeah. No, 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 no. But no, 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 no. Bud, just shut up, man. The only reason why you live and breathe without the aid of a tube or a machine or anything is because of the good offices of this, this wonderful man here. Do you understand that? Yes or no? Yes. All right. Don't push it with all of these jokes like the one just... Let's get off that. No, I... You know what I'm talking about. Yes, ma'am. I, I, I guess... But... You're a good man, but when you try to go far afield and when you try to be Mr. Jo Mr. Yucks and Mr. You know, laugh a minute, you're going to see Mr. Jot and Mr. Jocks or something. Sorry. Then you blow every chipmunk known in the, you know, hierarchy of anim animalology. That's not even a word. Well, I just made one up. What about that? You made it up. Yes, sir. All right. Check in. Ted Bell joining us here tonight on the world-famous Phil Henry Show. Ted. Right hey, come on down. Hey, go on down to Beverly Hills. You know, we're only doing takeout right now, but our bar is open a couple hours in the morning, a couple hours in the evening. Come on in. I'll sing you a song, one from Hamilton that a lot of people say reminds them of, reminds them of me, of him, or, you know. I got that mixed up. The, it reminds them of what? They, they want me to sing the song from Hamilton that it reminds them of me. Uh, did you see Hamilton, Phil? I sure did. We saw it uh, Friday night. What, what was the third? Yeah, Friday night. We, we saw it. No, you can only see it on the third. That's what he said. He saw it on the third. All right. So I know, General, you didn't watch it. Uh, All right. So it's, it's me, right? Yes, it is you. I was just want to know how many. I've seen it. I saw it when it was in Los Angeles on 2015, and Frank and I again saw it in New York. <laughs> all right. So I guess I'm the only one that hasn't seen it. No, we all saw it. We watched it on the Disney. Did you watch it? I had not seen it, but I did watch it on Disney, yeah. And I just wanted to tell you uh, that... And we, and we also saw... Margaret, I know that you saw Hamilton. I want people to know that, that uh, I'm not sitting here watching it on Hulu. Thank you very much. Well, Margaret, you know, some of us did watch it on Hulu. Can we get... Mr. Mr. Bell is the guy. Thank you very much, bud. I'm the guy. All right, you're right. Uh, anyway, Ted Bell joins us from... Uh, actually, you're on your way to Ted's uh, Beverly Hills? I'm on my way over to Ted's Beverly Hills right now. Going to be opening up the bar for a couple of hours. Come on in. And as you know, Phil, I've been... Because we have such a stripped-down staff, and uh, you know we've got a, we've got a, you know a light staff because we are not doing uh, any dine-in service. But uh, one of the great things we are doing is we have the bars open, and uh, we had the bar open last night as well. And one of the I heard some people saying, and I'm trying to get to this. I'm trying to tell you about Ted's Beverly Hills, but I was very excited about this. Is some of the people had said to me, you know, you remind us a little bit of Alexander. Now I'm not saying I'm Alexander Hamilton. I, I'm not saying that at all. But they said that I remind them a little bit of Alexander Hamilton, and I, I took that as a great compliment. Now, who, who are you talking about? These are these are people at the bar. Yes, they're people at the bar. Well, weren't these guys from downtown, Ted? So what if they were from downtown? Are you trying to tell me that their opinion means less because they happen to be unfortunate men living in Persia? Oh, is that? Oh, okay. Excuse me, General. No, I'm not saying that. Excuse me. I, I didn't know that we were wading into your high-end district there. No, I'm not saying that, Ted. I'm just saying, who are these guys saying that you reminded them of Alexander Hamilton? Yes, they were the guys at the bar. All right, I, maybe, the General, what are you saying, General? They're blowing smoke? You know, they may be blowing a little bit of smoke up your skirt. So what? Oh, sure. So the so I come... Let's forget that. What What did they say? No, 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 it's okay. It's all right. Ted, we're not saying that they didn't think you reminded them of Alexander Hamilton, and I think what the general was saying was very ill-considered. All right, I'm sorry. I thought you were giving these guys free drinks. I'm not giving anybody free drinks, and I'm not giving any rummies from Skid Row free drinks at Ted's of Beverly Hills. And I'm sorry, I didn't mean to mention, I didn't mean to characterize those men that way. Boy, we're really off to a great start here this week, man. So you're talking about these guys that are, they're bringing the, bu they're, com they're coming on the bus from downtown. That's what you guys are telling me. You told me these guys were getting off the bus from downtown. Okay, Phil. You told me. Yes, I did. You're right. Okay. Pershing Square, th that kind of stuff. Yes. 
Okay, and these are guys that are down on their luck and they're getting a drink from you. I'm not giving it for free. They're buying the drink. What are you charging those guys? Let me ask you, what are you charging those guys for a rusty nail? Oh, come on. Well, are, you, are you charging them full price? Are you charging them full price or are you giving them like a, a break? I'm charging them. Oh, man. Here I came. You know, uh, Ted, may I say something? No. Here I came on here and I wanted to say something good. May I say something, Ted, before you embarrass yourself off the air for good? Yeah? Just let it go, and let's talk about what the song is that those men said you should sing, because you reminded them of Alexander Hamilton. These were the guys at, at, at the bar. Yeah, but now when you say it, now I think it ain't worth a pinch of you-know-what. I was thinking, hey, these people said that song... I, I, my shot, I'm not going to throw away. My shot, I'm not going to throw away. My shot, because I'm young, strong, and scrappy. You know, I'm young, strong, and scrappy, and I'm just like my country, and I'm not... You know the song, Phil? Yeah, I know it very well. It's the song that he's singing there in front of his mates in the pub. Right. And they said, you know, Ted, you remind us of Alexander Hamilton because you are single-minded, you are a very creative thinker, you are a high intellect. And again, you know, I don't think these things of myself, but these guys said, you do sort of remind us of Alexander Hamilton. And so what I did is I went home and I listened to that song and I worked up a little act. But you're singing a song for these people behind the... The other day you felt humiliated by that. Well, this makes me feel better because I wasn't just singing Daisy, Daisy. So I, I, what I do is I doff my cap, I put it back on, and I go, I'm not throwing away my shot. I'm not throwing away my shot. And what, what kind of choreography? Well, I'm just kind of moving my arms back and forth like I'm, like I'm a prize fighter. I'm not going to throw away the shot. I'm young, strong, and scrappy, and I'm just like my country, you know, Phil? Yeah, and so that... Uh... So what is it with you people? Here I come with something really exciting that I'm really excited about. Well, what are you emotional about it for? Because this has been a hard time for me. I thought I told you that. You did, Ted. Yes. It's been very hard. Financially, it's been a hit to my pride. I'm singing, you know, Bicycle Bill for Two for guys that just come in off the bus from Pershing Square. And now I'm singing a song from Hamilton because they said I reminded them of Hamilton. <sighs> oh, okay. What do I sound like? I'm bawling like a little boy? Yeah, you do, frankly. You do, Ted. All right. I'm sorry. I know it's been tough for you, man. And I apologize for, you know, any comments or anything we've said. So, the guys, you know, I don't think it is a bad comparison. You got a lot of wage, Mr. Bell. You are like Alexander Hamlin. He come, he come to America with nothing, and he built it up and everything. That's exactly right, bud. Because even though I inherited the restaurant from my father, my father drank up the profits, as you know, Phil, because he drank. And even though I drink myself, I don't like alcohol that much. I drink, and I drink to excess quite a bit. But I don't enjoy it the way my father did, you know. And so I am sort of my, I am sort of the, uh, my, I go my own way. Well, the story of Hamilton, and uh, we all have seen it, um, Frank and I. Uh, yes, you and Frank saw it live on stage. Okay, so go, go ahead, Margaret. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. The story of Hamilton, for those of you in the audience that don't know, is he was, Alexander Hamilton was our first Treasury Secretary. He was an orphan from the Caribbean. He was born to white parents. He himself was uh, European, uh, of European descent, but he identified very much with the, the life of the people on his island, especially the slaves that were being uh, sold into slavery. Uh, he was a very early abolitionist, he and his wife Eliza. When he came to America, he came with uh, a letter of introduction from the people of his island because his parents had died. Uh, he entered what is now Columbia University, then it was called King's College and made his way in this country as an immigrant to become our first, uh, not only our first secretary of the treasury, but he was a Revolutionary War colonel. He was George Washington's best friend and chief of staff. And in the end, at the Battle of Yorktown, led a very brave charge on a British redoubt, or if you will, trench, that helped secure that victory. I'm Margaret Gray. Yay. That was fantastic, Margaret. Thank you. That was very good, Margaret. That was, though, you know, um, did you read the book or something? I did read them. I read it right after Phil recommended it. So you and Phil are way down the road on this? Okay. So, uh, but, but no, man, look at, dude, it, it, just because we read the book on Hamilton, Margaret's seen the play, it doesn't mean that it is not true that you remind some people of Alexander Hamilton. And, you know, in a way, Ted, you are yourself driven as Alexander Hamilton was. You've got ideas as he did. You are a guy who 
people like you and love you and uh, uh, and I will say this and you're not going to like this but yeah even though you are pompous okay all right I, I, I plead guilty even though you're pompous Alexander Hamlin was pompous and even though you're arrogant so is he but he knew what he was doing and he was right many times and people loved him for that well I, I thank you for that Bill. and the other thing that Alexander Hamlin had was a son and I've got a son well that's oh, wow yeah, bring that up his son died in a duel I know I know I just remembered I should god damn it Marcy was, Marcy was upset with that aspect. I said, Marcy, look at this. They, the Hamilton, he's, I said, the Hamilton. And she goes, who's the Hamilton? I said, well, I mean, Alexander Hamilton. In a way, I call him Hamlin or Hamblin. Slow down. I'm sorry. I said, Alexander Hamilton, he and his wife had a son. And then she said, was that the one who had his brains blown all over them? And I said, oh, my God. What did she say? She said, isn't he the son that had his brains blown all over his vest in a duel? That's not what happened. Well, didn't his son die in a duel? Yeah, but he didn't have his brains blown all over his vest. Well, Marcy tried to make it bad. Well, she shouldn't have done that, man. Well, the boy died, though, didn't he? Yes, he did. Look, and Alexander Hamblin had a very tragic life, okay? You just said Alexander Hamblin. No, I did not. Alexander Hamblin had a tragic life. He lost his son to a duel, as he would lose his own life to a duel a few years later. And it was a very crushing and uh, dispiriting thing. Well, that, that part of the play... That part of, of Hamilton is sad, sad, sad. No question about it. It's, uh, it's, yeah, it's a very, very sad thing. But he comes back from that. Well, I don't want to lose my son. All right, Ted, you're not going to, dude, you know. That was Bell. Who, no, he said you're going to lose your son. It's just because Alexander Hamilton did, you know. Okay, you just said Alexander Hamilton. No, he didn't. What is with you, man? It's, uh, every time I hear the name Alexander Hamilton, I'm hearing Alexander Hamblin, Hamdenden. I don't know. Are you doing okay? I'm doing fine. I, was, I called the show. I was in a great mood. I felt good. I was going to talk about I'm not throwing away my shot. And I, and I do the dance. Are, do people like it? No, they don't necessarily. No, they don't. But I, it makes me feel better. I feel like I'm doing something and I'm not standing there doffing a derby. You're wearing a derby? I brought a derby and yeah, I just thought it was good for this. Yeah, Mr. Can I tell him? Go ahead. Uh, Mr. Bell wears a derby and he has a garter thing that he wears on his arm and, he's, and in spats. Go ahead, you give me crap about that if you want to. You wear spats. Yes, I wear spats. Yes. I'm a big deal, so you wear spats. Spats sounds very uh, homey and period PC, you know. Yeah, period. You know, things are getting kind of bad here, Phil, and I'm thinking about throwing down sawdust. I, I don't know. Throwing down sawdust? You're, you're kidding me, right? No, I'm not kidding you. If the business doesn't start to pick up here, i got to start throwing down sawdust and start doing some of those, like, specialty hot dogs with rice and Shirley Temple. Oh, boy. Well, you already serve Shirley Temples. I know, but I'm going to have to do things like mud pie and all that. I, I think things are going to pick up, dude. And uh, well, Oh, really? Well, thank you very much. Thanks. So God just checked in, folks. And I don't claim to be God, but I'm trying to encourage you, and I think I really do. I think things are going to pick up for you. And, uh, well, yeah, you think things are going to pick up for a... Uh, See, you're slurring, and that makes me think you've been drinking. No, I no, I haven't been drinking. Uh, I'm a little bit tired because I was out doing backbreaking work today. Because Dean Wheeler, bless his heart, decided not to show up and help me. And I'm glad you didn't, Dean. Okay. Oh yeah, I heard about that. I heard Wheeler. What did you do, Dickman? I called him up and I left a message saying, "Yeah, do you do?" Uh... I thought that was hysterical. I heard Wheeler almost came. I heard Wheeler almost came out of his shorts on that one. That's pretty damn funny. You know that? What? But he's not. What? They got Wheeler on the le on the other line. Yeah, Dean. Oh, hi. Yeah, I, uh, Ted. I heard you. So you really got a big laugh out of that, huh? Uh, you know what I heard, Dean, was very funny. Yeah. Okay. Uh, well, guess what? I didn't do any yard work for him. No, I know that, but Dickman played the, the calls. Dickman played the calls for who? For me. Okay, Phil. So what I understand is your staff is now off air playing the phone calls that chump guy that chumped me. It, it wasn't anything that big of a deal, Dean. He just played it. I heard him saying, yeah, you know, I, I hear you. I hear you trim hedges. Thanks. Thanks so much, Phil. Well, is that it? Is that it? I th that's it, yeah. All right. Um, that was Dean Wheeler from, uh, I guess he's still up there at the, the backstop in uh, Oakland, California. Listen, I thank you very much, uh, Ted, for being on with us. And um, congratulations, uh, you know. Congratulations on what being being compared to Alexander Hamilton by some guys from Pershing Square. Well, you know what, man, you thought it was a very special thing. I know, I'm just screwing around. Jeez. All right, thank you, Ted Bell. Great talking to you, man. The best of luck. Peace out, bro. Yeah.
Jesus, man. Out, bro. I mean, that's right. Cats of Beverly Hills. Shit. Steakhouse. Come on down. Hey, come on down to Ted to Beverly Hills, because I'm telling you, a lot of people think I remind them of Alexander Hamilton and the wonderful story that he is. Yeah. Here at Tess, we I want to put my boot. I'm sorry. Can you do that again, Phil? Can I do what again? I, I messed it up. Never mind. Ted Bell, folks. Whatever. World famous Phil Henry show from the Al Pacifico in Southern California is executive produced by Phil Henry for Siempre Incorporated All Rights Reserved on Podcast One. I'm Margaret Gray. Hey. I'm Bud Dickman. And I'm, also, I'm Bud Dickman. You do yard work. You do the yard work. Knock it off, Bud. Oh my God, I'm just... Just knock it off. I'm Dean Wheeler.